Okay, so we're going to start out with the first mill project. Um, if you're running the mill for the first time in the lab, this will be the first thing you do. And this will be you being checked out on the machine. So I have my drawing. Uh, this is for the bolt gauge, our first project on the mill. I have my material here that I just cut off the horizontal saw. I have a shop rag here. Um, there's a blue bin right there by the classroom door. I'm going to leave this in my pocket. I've also grabbed uh, a file, a mill file, off of um, the tool crib next to the surface plate. And I grabbed a dead blow hammer that's lead filled and it won't bounce back up. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make sure that at least three of these edges are deburred with the file. Uh, more than likely both these edges will be sawed edges unless it's a, one of the finished edges on from the uh, material. So I'm going to always, when I use a file, I'm always going to go in the forward direction. I'm never going to drag the file back across uh, the cutting surface of the file. So I always just go forward. Just a few strokes, I might maybe change the angle from really steep to steep the other way to maybe at 45 degrees. And for this setup, I really only need to do three edges of this surface. So the bottom edge, we're going to locate to the parallels. My two side edges, which are going to locate on the vise. So, so this is the bird, and I can kind of use my hand and wipe off those chips or use a rag and wipe off those chips off of this part. So um, for my mill setup, I've gone through the checklist, um, I've cleaned all of this, I've um, selected my cutter and I've selected um, my arbor has been selected. So I'm basically ready to cut. I've calculated my RPM for this end mill. Um, so I'm going to clean off my uh, my vice jaws. I'm going to take my parallels here. I'm going to clean these as well. And maybe check it by hand. Check this by hand. Make sure this is all clean. Set them in here like this. And against both sides with the vise open approximately the size of the width of the mic part, which is two inches. I'm going to make sure the deburred edge is facing down so that deburred edge sits on the, the parallels here. And I'm going to have the part sticking off of here about a quarter of an inch. I obviously, if I, if I have it sticking out like this, then that's not as rigid of a cut. If I don't have it sticking out far enough, there's a chance I could violate the steel mill vice jaws and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to set this in there like that. I'm going to use my, my mill vice handle here. Kind of hold this in there. Put some weight on this. I don't have to put a lot of weight on this um, because there's a mechanical advantage to the mill vise that puts over upwards of 600 pounds of pressure clamp, clamping force. I'm going to move my table over and I'll even pull this. I can actually pull this handle out slightly and rotate it and relock it in position. And I'm going to go ahead and move my table. Take my dead blow hammer. Make sure all this stuff is. And I should be able to just hit it one time. And I'm going to hit it a second time. Let me move this out of the way. A second time. And I can try and move these parallels from underneath the part. And the parallels are. Um, there are two thin pieces of material and they're six inches long, they're about uh, an eighth of an inch thick or a little thicker and then 
they are the same dimension all the way across from the bottom edge to the top edge which matches the exact same dimensions on the other parallel from all the way across so when I put these parallels in both sides of my vise it creates a locating surface that is the bottom of the part is parallel to the top of the parallel is parallel to the bottom of the parallel is set parallel to the top of the bed of the vise which is parallel to the bottom of the vise which is parallel to the table which is perpendicular to my spindle center line so when I take a cut with a perpendicular spindle that's been trimmed in indicated into the vise I have a completely square cut relative to my axis of parallel parallel or perpendicular relative to my axis of travel either this direction or my longitudinal feed direction often referred to as X so I check that these are in there solid I really don't need my hammer anymore um, so based on the mill handout for setup I'm going to continue on I'm going to add the arbor with my wrench I'm in actually low gear here I'm going to rotate this again Hold the brake and tighten, tighten the arbor to the spindle with my box wrench. I'm going to now use my Allen wrench and I'm going to rotate in the low gear so I can see this. Now I'm going to be in high gear, so I'm going to make sure I'm in high gear when I cut this. I'm going to rotate to my set screw. I can loosen one turn and I can see that I am seated correctly on the weld and shank. I'm going to tighten this. And actually, I'll turn on the light while I'm here. I'm going to with the light. I can, most of the lights are working. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down about an inch and a half on my dial using my quill lock. Um, so this is ready to go. I calculate the RPM now. This is a 3 8 um, diameter end mill. So I can calculate the RPM and make sure in this case I would be in, I would use the I'm in high gear, so I would make sure I'm in high gear before I turn on the spindle. And I would adjust to my correct spindle speed. In this case, I'm not going to go over 2,000. Now, I'm going to bring my end mill over on this side of my part because I'm going to be cutting on the right side of the vise. Um, it doesn't really matter which side you cut from I'm, I'm, or move the table, but if you notice I'm on this side of the vise, um, sometimes that would afford more safety protection, but I also can't see as good. So I'm actually going to bring this up. I cleared my end mill's cleared the vise. I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to look and I can see that the bottom of my end mill has cleared the bottom of my part, but the top of the flutes of the end mill um, are over the top of the part. So I'm not too far low or too far high with the centering of my end mill. Um, my spindle is locked with the quill lock or my quill is locked with the quill lock. My handle is, this handle is out of the way of the cut I'm about to take. Now I'm going to switch to this side so I can see a little bit better. Turn my spindle back on. And I'm going to come over here. I know I'm going to climb mill, so I'm, the way I'm going to cut is I'm going to cut from this side of the part feeding this direction. So I'm actually going to start very close to the, the front edge of my part 
and I think everyone should really do this setup. You actually could you cut this on the other side if you were left-handed. Most people are right-handed. Um, and I can see and rotate with my right hand and a lot of people will cut from on this side of the vise because they're right-handed. Um, you really could do this from either side of the vise. So close. I'm going to actually bring the table up a little bit. 100,000 since one revolution. Um, bring it over a little bit. So now I'm going to just slowly, I can, I can see that I'm really close to the material. So I can, I'm going to slowly rotate my handle. Make sure you can see me do this. I'm going to slowly rotate my handle. Till I know I can I can see and hear it cutting, but I think that's the saw edge. Um, so that maybe needed to be need to be a little better. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Now I can hear and see it cutting a little deeper. I'm going to now come off the part in this direction. So my end mill's off the part, and I'm going to go in another twenty thousandths now. If I rotate this direction, and these are spring-loaded, so I'm not doing that unless I push this in and rotate. But if I rotate clockwise, the table is going to move further away from my cutter. If I rotate counterclockwise, the table is going to move closer to the cutter. So I'm going to move counterclockwise. And the micrometer dial here, I don't really even have to worry about this. I just want to make sure it's tight. So this shows 120, each one of these lines is a thousandth. So I'm actually going to just go 20 thousandths this direction. Again, it's spring loaded. And my dial is locked, so I can see that I moved 20 thousandths. And now I'm going to cut from this side with my, with my spindle cutter rotating in the clockwise direction. I'm going to, I know that I am cutting in this direction uh, as line, what we call conventional milling. Now, the ply piece, watch the other video, hopefully you did, and you know the difference between ply milling and conventional milling. I'm rotating this direction and I'm, I'm feeding opposite that rotation. Now, uh, Oftentimes, it'll leave a bad finish here on this side. And I just took what's called minimum cleanup. This is what I want everyone to do, is take a cut of 20 thousandths after you've touched the material, take it off the end mill off the part, go in 20 thousandths, and then take this first cut. And then you'll be checked out on the machine. Um, but because we're conventional milling, it's got kind of a bad finish. So at this point, what you can do is we can actually, without moving in any further, I need to just go right back over that same cut. And this is often, we call it, refer to this as a spring pass. Um, and then I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to bring my, my quill up, out of the way. And the finish is still bad. You know what? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, let's do a climb cut, bring it back over to the other side. And on, the, on this climb cut, you can also do this. I'm only going to move five thousandths. So very, very small distance here. Just so I get a good finish on this. Again, I'm climb milling. Very little chip load, any more than this, and it might be a little bit unsafe, and it might jerk the machine because of the issues with backlash. So I'm going to look at this now, and I, I can see it's a good finish, and I did clean up the sawed edge. So at this point, you will have been checked out on this machine. And this looks good. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to deburr. You can see this finish. 
is really good. Make sure before you take this out that it is cleaned up the sawed edge and you can see on this side uh, if you can see hopefully it's a kind of a rough